So this is specifying the polar type of array with the number of copies and then replicating the number of rows. So this is about the polar array. Next we also have something the array along a path. So let us roll back. So let us draw an arc following the path. So let us draw an arc with a starting and the end point as this. So So specifying the radius of the arc. So let us assume this is the arc. So let us replicate this object along this path. So let's go into the array. and select this object, select this path and we want to have this along this path. So as you could see, now same as in the uh, polar coordinates, we can see the same effect here, but now it has been replicated along the path. So based on this, the handle again, you can control how many replications are there and what is the distance between the replication. So you can see the number of items that you want to specify, what is the spacing between them and what is the total number of distance between the first and the last item. And also you can, uh, same way what we see in the uh, polar coordinates, you can specify how many rows that you want to plot to. So it is plotted from the base point in the uh, exterior manner. So it's always a positive unit. So uh, this is how you vary the number of rows and number of spacing based on a path that is chosen. So this is very useful when you have something to trace along a path or something, then you can use this command. For example, you are positioning a hole on a spline in a drawing, then you can draw that spline and then use this path command to replicate the multiple holes along the spline. So this is one way of doing it. Then again you have this align items so you can take in so that you can have the same view. So it depends on your control but as you could see when you take off this align so the first is uh, object has been taking the same shape but it will get into the path. It need not necessarily trace the path. So that's why this align will make sure that the distance between each and every object is maintained. This corner is maintained and hence it is replicated. This option by default is enabled but this is to draw in the 3D path. So next again you can specify the tangent towards which it has to be drawn. So based on this you can control the angle of how it's going to get placed. Then also you can specify the current measuring method how it's going to be spaced between each and every path. So whether it's the spacing or dividing by the total. So here the total distance is 62. So based on the number of items, it will get divided by the total distance. Whereas in the measure, only then you will get the uh, distance highlighted. That is based on the distance, the number of items it will get automated. So this is a way of controlling the arrays on a path. So this is about arrays. So feel free to explore into the command prompts for each and every methodology. Essentially whatever you have in this ribbon is replicated here and based on your requirement you can highlight and then explore. So this is about array tool. So now let's uh, look into the break command. This is a very useful command. It can be used as a standalone tool as well as a merge tool with others. It is similar in application to trim command but let us look into this uh, basic command so first let us draw a rectangle and then let us draw a circle passing through this so assuming you want to delete this part 
An erase command deletes the entire object. But you want to delete this portion alone, then you can make use of this break command. There is an efficient command that is available called as trim that we will look into the next sessions. But let us see how we can use this break command to do the same. So this break, what it does is, it breaks the object, a single object into multiple objects and removes away the selected part. So it's actually two part. It is converting an individual object into multiple objects and then removing which is not required. So let's look into one way of doing it. So click in break and select which object you want to break in. And by default, uh, the point that you select is automatically selected as the first point. You can see here the highlighted part. So now alternatively, you can specify the first point by typing near and specify that this is the point that you want to break and this is the second point. So as you could see, now this rectangular object is being broken at these points. So similarly, you can replicate the same by removing for this circle. Break object, selecting first point as here and now selecting the second point. So now we have got the object like this. So this is one way of utilizing the break command to trim out the areas that is not required to us. So this break can also be used to split a single component into multiple without deleting anything. Assuming we want to convert this rectangle line, this unit as a single part and this as a second part, we can also do the same by using the break command, specifying this object, selecting the first part as say as here and then instead of mentioning the second part you can press in alpha and then click on enter so now what's happening is this has been split into two entities so thereby you are splitting the object based on the point that you are specifying so this is one way of using the break command to effectively split a component into two, two different parts and remove the second part that is not required Next, let's look into the mirror command. It's a very frequently used command that will help you in a lot of time saving activities because most of the components are designed or almost symmetrical. So in symmetrical components, you can recreate one object instance and then use that to replicate in other instances with respect to an imaginary mirroring surface. So let's see how we can replicate it. Let's assume this is uh, whatever we have created earlier this uh, image and this image has to be replicated onto this surface so let us use the mirror command so type in mi will prompt the mirror so select which objects you want so let us select this all and click on enter so now it will ask for a mirror line about which axis should it be mirror so suppose if you're drawing a line here over and above this line so let's see if we draw it here about this line it is getting mirrored suppose if we draw in this way it is mirrored vertically so vertically and horizontally depends on which line you are using and again which part the angle so suppose you want to always do it in the horizontal way then type in f8 to trigger the orthogonal mode so it will get automatically snapped out to this axis only either the vertical or the horizontal axis so this will help you to ensure that you are not missing out on the perfect horizontal or perfect vertical. Then once you click on the end line, it will prompt whether you want to erase the original or not. Because sometimes we want to erase the original object and retain the duplicated image only. Then you can do, but by default, the no has been selected as the uh, default, so you can click on. So this is the uh, mirror command that you can use very effectively in certain cases you need to use an array frequently in certain cases you need to uh, use a copy or move command and uh, in certain situations where mirroring will help you so these are the frequently used editing tools that will help you in designing your drawings more effectively next is the offset command so offset is used to create a new object at a specified distance from an already existing object or through a specific point. 
so this is very useful when creating or duplicating image and not worrying about the dimensions of the new object for example if you want to fence a given establishment saying so consider this as my plot area and i want to ensure that i create a bank out of this area so now we can use make use of the offset command you can click by o offset and specify the distance through which it has to be it has to be a positive non zero number so uh, assuming we have to offset through a distance of 5 and selecting the object to which it is getting offset at so and then based on moving your cursor inside or outside you can position where it is it is an internal boundary or an external boundary so this is the predominant use of the object offset command because we need not now worry about the dimensions of the external object only the internal dimensions with which we know of or the external dimension with whichever data we have we can create the other data only with the distance of separation between these two images so this is the usage of an offset command through distance so next we have the offset of through so that is well replicated when we see some situations like this suppose we have a line here and we have a, a different line say like this let us take away the ortho mode yeah so now i have to offset this through this point so this is where your offset command and through comes in so we need to select this object and through this point see it basically it it's a combination of a move command or a mirror command or so but still you can get to get an offsetting of this through this point so uh, the commands that we have spoken about earlier the move copy mirror arrays it's all can be used in a combination within each other to suit our requirement so based on the base point that you have based on the distances already set or based on the boundary condition you can feel free to choose the best tool that is uh, suited for that approach so this sums up the uh, offset image in offset we have one more command called the multiple offsets so in multiple offset it's a uh, extension of the through command so you can see here by clicking on o and selecting through offset selecting which object to do and then when it is asking for the next point you can see you also have an option to do the multiple offset by entering m so once you do that it goes into the multiple entry points so based on the first object you can create multiple entries say the first is 5 next assuming it's an eq space is 10 15 and so on and so forth so you could see it all the objects are equally spaced between this suppose if you want to get back or undo one step you can press on u to remove that alone the difference between this undo and the overall undo is that let us try the overall undo that is the uh, system based command it will remove off all the offsetted images so the undo command inside offset helps you to undo only one step inside this command when you're doing it externally it will remove all the commands so this is the difference between the undo into offset and the system based undo now let's start a new drawing and in this now let us look into the other drawing facilities that is the polyline a rectangle and a polygon so to start off with let us look into the rectangle so we can invoke rectangle by specifying rec so once prompted it will ask for the first corner point and the last corner point so this is what we have been seeing so let us dwell a little bit deeper into the rectangle so as you could see here in this command when you initiate rectangle it will also ask for what are the different properties that needs to be included so it gives in the chamfer the elevation fillet thickness and width of it 
for the first point so this secures the basis of the rectangle so in the closing step you can also specify instead of specifying the corner point you can specify the area or the dimensions and also specify the rotation let us look into one by one so for the first point when we are specifying we can also have the option to define how the rectangle is going to be chamfered or filleted chamfer and fillet will look a um, little much deeper into the uh, manufacturability section right now we can understand that you can use this command if you type in chill then it will ask for the first chamfer distance so let us say it's 0.5 let us assume it's a uniform chamfering of 0.5 mm and the other chamfer distance also 0.5 so it will get updated in the memory so similarly we can specify the thickness or the width of the line so let us just check what the chamfering has brought into so as you could see the borders are chamfered by 0.5 mm using this chamfer condition so this gets stored in the memory so each and every time you do it it's get updated so by default it's zero but as you could see when you prompt the rectangle again it shows that the current rectangle modes is that chamfer has been updated as 0.5 and 0.5 so likewise if you override chamfer and go for a fillet so right now the fillet radius let's say is 0.5 and now draw the rectangle you can see the corners are filleted by a radius of 0.5 mm so this is the inbuilt chamfer and fillet feature in the rectangle option so next is the elevation thickness and width so elevation and thickness is majorly used for a three dimensional rectangle for an extrusion surface so let us demonstrate it in a single go so elevation we'll see that the height of the rectangles let it be say 5 mm and uh, let us specify the thickness of the rectangle be say uh, 2 mm and the width of width w the width of the line be say uh, 1.2 mm and if we draw it out you can see uh, we are on the top view right now so the we have specified the uh, the thickness the elevation and the width line width of it so this can be better viewed by changing this let us go to the front view so you can see here this is the rendering that it has been done so let us orbit a little bit so this is the rectangle that you have got so the this is the line width and then we have the thickness and the width so this is a 3d functionality this is just for understanding but as we are dealing with the 2d drawings so this would be of less important to us so let us come out of it but the, you have to remember that you have to undo the changes that you have done as you can see the inputs have been updated here so you have to go and update the chamfer this is updated to 0 fillet again updated to 0 elevation updated to 0 thickness to 0 and width as 1 so now you can go on proceed draw your one yeah so this is we have to still make the width as zero so let us do it rectangle and width to be zero reset it so now you get back to the original shape so this is the function of a rectangle so now the first object what we have seen is rectangle using the first corner point now for the second point we also have the option to choose the area of the rectangle or the dimensions of the rotation let us look into the area first 